Hello everyone, my name is Mark Oude Aling. I am the chair of the Best Paper Committee of the IEEE Custom Integrated Circuit Conference or CICC. In this video, we'll give you a sneak preview of some of the best papers at CICC 2022. After two fully virtual years, CICC will be held in a hybrid form from April 24 to April 27 with the physical part located in Newport Beach, California. For the latest information on the conference, please visit the address shown on the screen. It is my honor and privilege to show you pitches of some of our best paper nominees in three different categories. We have five invited, three regular and nine student paper nominees spread out over the different sessions in the conference. In this particular compilation, we will present the following pitches. The session numbers and the currently planned time and date of the presentation are included for your reference. For completeness, here is the full list of nominated papers. All best paper nominees are explicitly indicated as such in the conference program. They have been given non-overlapping time slots, so you can attend them all if you like. These 17 papers form a good sample of recent research results from both industry and academia around the globe and showcase the quality, breadth and depth of the CSC conference. Please join us for a great gathering of students, researchers, industrial leaders and experts worldwide. Get inspired by great ideas, get recharged with great educational tutorials, learn about trends and state-of-the-art developments in IC design. And just as important, meet colleagues and make new friends for life. For now, enjoy these inspiring pitches, and I hope to see you either physically or virtually at CICC 2022. Hi, I'm Jong Eun Jung from Samsung Foundry. I would like to welcome to our 2022 CICC paper. The paper is three nanometer gate all around DTC for succeeding PPA by technology. Instead of TJ Song, who is first author of this paper, I'm going to introduce various DTCO to overcome recent PPA challenges in advanced node, including three nanometer gate all around DTCO. In advanced node, effective area scaling cannot be achieved without DTCO. Also, even though CPU FMX increases, power reduction is required to maximize CPU throughput. So DTCO has been key element to fully enjoy given technology benefit. In this paper, three nanometer GAA DTC study is introduced for better PPA. GAA has three major design benefits of a smaller capacitance, large effective width, and more design flexibility compared with the pin pad. This design flexibility of GAA can be also applied to SRAM, which makes better SRAM we mean. Finally, I would like to highlight the improvement of PPA circle in GA design. GA provides high performance by large effective width and better design flexibility, eventually making low power and high density with positive and recursive feedback in PPA circle. Thanks for watching this short video of 3 nanometer J DTC, and I hope to see you in CICC 2022 with more detail. Thank you. Hello, I'm Munich Konagatani from NTT Corporation. I represent 110 gigahertz bandwidth, indium phosphide HBT based analog multi -plexer and analog demultiplexer circuits for beyond one terabit per second per channel coherent optical transceivers. To cope with the rapid growth of communications traffic, 400 gigabit per second per channel coherent systems are now being deployed in optical core networks. However, further scaling is required, and the transmission capacity per channel is expected to exceed 1 terabit per second in the near future to sustain the ever-growing traffic. To achieve a capacity of 1 terabit per second per channel, we need to handle 160 gigabit class baseband signals. This means that over 80 gigahertz bandwidth DACs and ADCs are required in coherent transceivers. This is one of the most significant challenges in achieving one terabit per second per channel systems. In order to overcome this challenge, we have a proposed AMAX and ADMAX based bandwidth extension techniques. As shown here, 2 to 1 AMAX and 1 to 2 ADMAX can double the bandwidth of DACs and ADCs, respectively. To validate this concept, we have designed and fabricated prototype AMAX and ADMAX ICs using our in-house 
250 nanometer indium phosphate HPD technology. As you can see here, both AMAX and ADMAX ICs achieve an excellent bandwidth characteristics of 110 gigahertz. So far, we have succeeded in demonstrating beyond one terabit per second per channel signal generation using AMAX integrated coherent optical transmitter front end module shown here. In my presentation at the conference, I'll explain the details of bandwidth extension techniques and AMAX ADMAX circuits. In addition, I'll address our latest demonstration of beyond one terabit per second per channel long haul optical transmissions. Thank you very much. Hello, we present a 112 gigabits per second minus 8.2 dBm sensitivity 4 pan linear TIA in 16 nanometer CMOS with co packaged photodiodes. High speed, low cost, and low energy optical links are in great demand for next generation data centers. And taking that as our motivation, we target our optical receiver solution with proposed TIA in CMOS with packet substrate housing both the PD and the CMOS chip flip attached with optimized interconnect between them for best performance. To accomplish 112 gigabits per second, we propose this three-stage inverter-based TIA. Our co-package prototype consists of four identical proposed TIAs exercised with various combinations of PDs and PD to RX trace lengths. And here is our assembled prototype and the fabricated CMOS chip with four identical TIA slices. Our electrical measurements confirm the max gain of 63 dB ohm and bandwidth of 32 gigahertz. Now let's take a tour of our optical measurement demo. Here we have co-packaged prototype with optical probe on left and electrical probes on the right. Taking a look inside the microscope, we have our CMOS chip in the center and bottom is our commercial PD in green. This is the O-band laser source fed into Max Zener modulator driven by broadband amplifier with input pattern from AWG. Here we see the 112 gigabits per second 4 PAMI diagram on a sampling scope without using scope equalization. Here we have the 112 gigabits per second 4 PAMI diagram of RX1 without any scope equalization. And the I diagram is further opened by using 4 tap FFE and 4 tap DFE on scope equalization. For more details, please check session 14, paper number 2. Thank you for watching.